for warming emissions. As our environment correspondent David Shipman reports, there's just one more day to reach an agreement. A bitterly cold morning as delegates make their way through the snow to the end game of a conference that's now faltering and utterly uncertain. The US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton arrived, promising American support, but also warning that other countries must show compromise too. It is no secret that we have lost precious time in these past days. In the time we have left here, it can no longer be about us versus them. And the big question, would the president come? The president is planning to come uh, tomorrow. Obviously, we hope that there will be something to come for. So with just 24 hours to go, how close are they to settling the key conflicts here? Well, on greenhouse gases, the developed countries have offered to cut emissions by 18% by 2020 compared to 1990. But developing countries say that's not nearly enough, though they're under pressure to curb the growth in their own emissions and prove it, especially China. On global warming itself, the most vulnerable countries say a rise of two degrees Celsius, a commonly agreed target, is too dangerous for them, and they're pushing for a lower rise of 1.5. And on finance, to help the poorest countries, many are demanding $200 billion a year. Well, this morning, America offered to help mobilize $100 billion by 2020, but that all depends on getting a deal here. Honorable Gordon Brown. And among those highlighting what's at stake, Gordon Excellent Brown. You have the floor. In these few days in Copenhagen, which will be blessed or blamed for generations to come, we cannot permit the politics of narrow self-interest to prevent a policy for human survival. And where does this leave the most vulnerable? Back in September, we met Shorbanu Kata at a refugee camp in Bangladesh. She was brought here by Oxfam. It feels good, she told me, to be here with these big people. I believe they'll do something. We'll know by tomorrow night. And David uh, joins me now. David, is there a sense, do you think, that, that people are lowering expectations now? Well, definitely, but it's not over yet. We've just heard that Barack Obama will definitely be coming to the summit, travelling through the night and arriving here in the morning. But he'll be joining a process that at the moment is pretty fraught. During the course of the day, the Danish hosts have had to give up on the way they were trying to handle things with informal negotiations. And I've just come from a briefing with the Climate Secretary, Ed Miliband, who again warned that things were very, very tough and may still fail. There's a great deal at stake here and not much time. George. David, thank you. Two British soldiers who died.